Hey troops, welcome to the channel Gen Dead Commando. My name's Ryan and today we're going to be reacting to nine secrets of the Statue of Liberty that most Americans don't know about. So I guess I'm not just going to learn something today, you guys are going to learn something today. But before we get into it, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. And members, I want to say thank you to you. I really do appreciate you supporting the channel, so thank you guys. If you want to become a member, actually, press the join button. If you don't see a join button, press the link in the description. Whilst you're there, check out my social media and all of that stuff, and follow me on Instagram, TikTok, all of that good stuff, guys, all right? And um, if you haven't been following my channel, um, a little bit about me. I'm a former Royal Marines commando, so I served in the military, and I react to pretty much anything and anything... Uh, any any kind of military related content, but I've I've recently started reacting to American stuff, and uh, it seems to be going quite well, guys. I really really enjoy the topic, and um, I've had a lot of positive feedback. So here's another one for you guys. Let's go. Boom, boom. <laughs> The Statue of Liberty is one of the most, if not the most, famous monuments in the world. Mm. Anyone visiting New York City can see her, but not everyone knows that Lady Liberty has her own secrets. Right, let me guess some of these secrets then. There's probably someone buried in there who died at the at building it. There's normally people die in these things back in the day, wasn't there? The death, um, it was erected late. And it doesn't stand for what we think it does. That's just my guesses. Let's go. One of them is she might not even be a lady at all. Counting Ooh. down from number nine, the Statue of Liberty. Now, nah, what do you think, guys? She's definitely a lady, right? Let me know in the comments. Liberty was once split into pieces. It's really hard to picture it, but the statue actually arrived from France on June 17, 1885 in over 300 copper pieces. The precious cargo was traveling in 214 crates on the French ship Isère. The iconic arm holding the torch wasn't there, however. It was standing in Madison Square Park for six years to help raise money to sponsor the pedestal. When the ship carrying the statue arrived, 200,000 that is pretty damn awesome. Thousand people came to welcome it to the U.S. Wow. The official dedication ceremony took place on October 28, 1886 with President Grover Cleveland presiding over it. Number eight, it was one of history's first crowdfunding campaigns. Hey, first, yeah, French one. sculptor Frederick Auguste Bartoli raised funds in his country to build the statue. It wasn't actually sponsored by the local government. When it was finished, the sculptor offered it as a gift to the US on one condition. They would build a pedestal for it. The federal government didn't like the idea, so <laughs> nope. the status of the statue was unclear for a few years. Then, American newspaper magnate Joseph Pulitzer stepped in. He basically started one of the first massive crowdfunding campaigns in history, promising every contributor an honorary shout-out in his newspapers. Even though 80% of the donations were small ones from middle-class citizens, Pulitzer managed to collect the necessary amount from over 120,000 donors. By the way, just think about that. Without the internet and everything else, how amazing is that? That is a bloody unbelievable feat. Well done. The famous sonnet, The New Colossus, which can still be found on a bronze plaque inside the statue, was also part wow. of the fundraising campaign. 7. The Statue of Liberty wasn't always green. The Statue of Liberty is made of copper, so it was originally about the same color as a penny. According to the New York Historical Society, it turned completely green because of oxidation in 1920. There was a time when it was half brown and half green. The new color survived the restoration, and they say the coating, called patina, won't ever disappear. 6. It used to serve as a lighthouse. The statue was originally supposed to serve as a lighthouse for ships sailing into New York Harbor. And two years Asia one then, guys. Do you think it would have looked better as like a copper penny color, or do you think it looks better green? I think it looks better green, to be fair. Years after it arrived in the U.S., it actually became one. For 16 years, the statue's lamp served as a beacon, but it wasn't bright enough, and running out of ideas to fix it, Bartoli offered to cover the entire statue in gold to make it brighter. Congress said no to that idea, since it would have been crazy expensive. And it would have been subject to vandalism. People would have just wanted to vandalize it to nick the gold. Five, it's all about number seven. 
It's easy to notice the statue has seven spikes on its crown, symbolizing universal liberty across the seven oceans and continents. Oh, okay. The less obvious reference to the number seven is in the number of windows in its head. There are 25 of them, which makes seven if you add up the digits. There are 16 leaves around the torch, and the monument itself is 151 feet tall. The sum of both of those digits is seven as well. Yeah, that's pretty Clearly, impressive. that number meant a lot for the statue's creators. Number four, the construction so Why, why did that number, I know it's about the seas and stuff like that, but is, is there anything else with that number? Porting the statue was designed by Gustav Eiffel. The pedestal of the Statue of Liberty was built in old Fort Wood on Liberty Island. It currently hosts museums that show the history of the statue with old photographs, videos, recorded oral histories, and the original torch Lady Liberty was holding in 1886. I have, and why- No, I've never been there. I would love to go there, though. It's like one of those moments in history, isn't it? That you've just, you've got to do it, man. And, and on, on this planet, you've got to see the Statue of Liberty. Have you seen it? Is it all it's cracked up to be? Was it good, bad, ugly? Let me know in the comments. Walked all those 300-some steps to inside her head and looked out through those cool windows. It was kind of claustrophobic and very cool. Number yeah. three, it might have Masonic ties. Ah, I was going to say, you know, number sevens and all of that. And then Masonic tie, yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking, guys. Didn't want to say it, but they've done it. There's a popular theory claiming that the Statue of Liberty was originally supposed to be dressed as an Arab peasant woman and stand at the southern opening of Egypt's Suez Canal. No way. I don't, I don't actually believe that. That's really, I, I, I don't know. I mean, that would be cool. Um, but no, I don't think, really? Is that true? The ruler of Egypt couldn't afford it. So Bartoli redesigned it, giving it a different dress and a new name and sent it as a gift to the American people to celebrate the anniversary of the American Revolution. So what does that have to do with the Masons? Well, Bartoli himself was a Freemason. He represented the French Grand Orient Temple Masons, hence his interest in Egypt. He supposedly wanted to put the statue there to symbolize the Orient showing the way. The torch Lady Liberty is holding is an important symbol in the Masonic culture as the Torch of Enlightenment or the Flaming Torch of Reason. The Masons also took part in the cornerstone laying ceremony in 1884, and the Grand Master, William A. Brody, presided over it in the company of Grand Lodge members. 2. The face of the Statue of Liberty That Masonic thing, I think, has got a lot of potential to be true. What do you, th what do you think? I, th I think it has. They fund a lot more than we believe, guys, all right? They're still to this day, you know? Liberty could be that of a man. When you think of the Statue of Liberty, do you see it as a she? Most people are positive it's a representation of the Roman goddess of freedom, Libertas. The widely accepted theory is that Bartholi modeled her face after his mother. Author and journalist Elizabeth Mitchell, however, claims that the sculptor actually used his brother's face as a model. As she was studying the photographs of Bartoli's family, mm. the writer noticed his mother does look a little bit manly, cheeks and stuff. Yeah, could that could be a bloke, guys. <laughs> there had a different eyebrow shape, thinner nose and lips, and smaller mouth. Yeah. Then she pointed out the striking resemblance between the sculptor's brother in his adult years and the statue. Because of his mental health condition, Bartoli's brother spent years at the hospital and Frederick would spend hours watching him. That could have helped him recreate his face in every detail. Another theory was presented by French writer Natalie Salmon, who claims Lady Liberty was modeled after her ancestor, Sarah Salmon. Ah. According to her, Bartholi saw Sarah's features particularly beautiful. Even yeah. though she had emigrated to the United States, she and her husband visited the sculptor at his studio when they briefly went back to Paris in 1875. He could have used that opportunity to draw Sarah and later use those images as a model. Mm, she's got quite a mannish jaw though, hasn't she? She's got quite a pronounced jaw. So, I don't know. I think, I think it actually could be a model. Number man. one, there's more than one Statue of Liberty. You're kidding me. And I'm not talking about its plastic souvenir versions or the one on Las Vegas Boulevard. You Hang on a minute. I've been to Las Vegas. I can't... can't I don't know if I can remember seeing that. 
then again, I drank about 30 beers that day, so that's probably my reason. <laughs> you can find a smaller Statue of Liberty, which was the original model for its big sister, in the wow. Jardin du Luxembourg in Paris. It's been there wow. since 1906, after Bartoli gave it to the Luxembourg Museum for the World's Fair of 1900. Another version... Right, I've got more chance of seeing that because of its locality to England. I might pay a visit and go see it, guys. ...of the iconic monument was erected on an island in the Seine River to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution in 1889. It has two dates on it, July 4th, 1776, and July 14th, 1789, symbolizing the friendship of two nations and the importance of revolution. There's also a life-size copy of the torch on the Pont de Lama in Paris. People from Par Paris is like really, really into the Statue of Liberty then, guys, isn't it? From around the world sponsored its construction as a symbol of Franco-American friendship. Beautiful, man. It was set not far from the Eiffel Tower on the 100th anniversary of the statue's dedication. Awesome. Hey, if you learned something new today, then give... Hey, troops, let's have a talk about this one then. So... Nine secrets of the Statue of Liberty most Americans don't know. Is that true? My American fans, my American subscribers, friends, let me know. Did you know those secrets? I mean, some of them seemed some seemed like there wouldn't have been a secret, you know. The Masonic ties, yeah, that's I can understand that. Um I think that's legit, by the way. Well, I think that's legit, man. The one about where it was supposedly um, it should have been uh, like an Arabic statue or something like that. I, I don't, I don't know if I believe that one actually, but uh, yeah, another good video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel, guys. We're doing this every day, and look forward to other content coming your way very soon. I am in the process of joining, rejoining the Royal Marines again, so look forward to military-based content if that goes successful. But other than that, I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.